The evolution of forest fire chemicals has, you know, been coming around for a long time, but it pretty well started in the 50s, uh, where they started trying to get something more effective than water. Water is the, the of course, the most used suppressant in the world, uh, and it will always be probably. But as uh, firefighters and fire managers on the ground saw the issues with managing uh, wildfire, especially large ones, as they start getting beyond that initial attack and and uh, uh, follow-up response. Uh, wildland fire managers saw a need to get something that would allow them to go indirect with fire chemicals. The only tool we had in the 50s and early 60s was uh, tractor lines and hand lines going indirect, which is a very dangerous um, uh, set of circumstances many times and a, a lot of thought and understanding of fire behavior and knowledge of what you're doing is very important before you send tractors and crews indirect in unburned fuel. And so uh, around the t time that uh, they were looking at the possibility of other chemicals that might allow that to happen, that started the, the, the generation of, the first generation of fire retardants, long-term fire retardants. Uh, suppressants rely on the presence of water, and no matter whether it's a gel, foam, uh, or any other kind of suppressant. So once the water evaporates, there's no, there's no uh, agent or uh, effective agent there to affect the fire. So, and that happens through radiation or through solar energy, radiation from the fire or solar energy. And so they saw that some of these long-term retardant possibilities will last long-term uh, and they don't, they don't uh, require the presence of water. So a long-term retardant and the generations that have come from the late 50s to now uh, have have improved so much, but they do not uh, require water. So the only reason they put water in retardant is to get it, deliver it to the aircraft, deliver it to the vegetation, and suppress the fire. The water that they put in it has to evaporate before the chemical starts its chemical reaction. So you can lay a line um, a, a mile ahead of a fire and it can dry and it'll still be effective when the fire hits it. You can't do that with water. So what's happened is by allowing uh, the aerial attack to do the in indirect attack now, you don't have to put people at risk uh, out there in the unburned fuels and the suppressants, the foams and gels, cannot do that for any length of time because the water evaporates so fast, especially in you know firefighting conditions and so the the effectiveness of the aerial application has 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 uh, completely gone out of sight as compared to what it was with water so the the uh, focus now by many agencies states federal uh, counties is to use long-term retardant for indirect attack and so that's made the aerial uh, uh, resources much more effective than they were with plain water. Well, that's an interesting, uh, the, um, uh, the cellulose fuel, that most wildland, all wildland fuels are around the world, um, are made up, the, a molecule of cellulose is C6H10O5. That's a molecule of cellulose. So when you use long-term retardant, which is in contact with cellulose fuel, and fire hits it, it changes the de way cellulose fuels decomposes. And when cellulose fuels burn naturally, they, the uh, products of combustion are methane, ethane, propane, butane. Uh, there's around 49 flammable components come off of cellulose when you burn it. In the presence of Foscheck, it, um, it stops that, 
that uh, production of methane, methane, propane. And what happens is it takes the, the CHs and Os in a molecule of cellulose and produces water and carbon. So it locks up the H, 2O, and, and makes steam and cools, and then it changes the fuel type to C, which is carbon. And so that chemical reaction over a, a, chain, a chain of events, as the fire burns into a retardant line, the cooling and the form of carbon slows the progress of the fire down till it eventually stops. And so that's where the term retardant comes from, is it retards the fire, and until you can get a hand line in there or a tractor line or something to hold the fire permanently, uh, that's the, the difference between water and long-term retardant is it does not re rely on the presence of water. It actually makes its own water when fire hits it. Out of cellulose. Comes out of the molecule of cellulose. So that's why it's so effective and it can be for months. We've had uh, treated homes down in San Diego County that were treated in May. The fire came through in October and the treated homes were saved. That was many months later. So that's where the term long-term retardant comes from because it's effective for long terms.